What's up, basketball fans? Welcome to the Warriors Report. It's time to talk about the Toronto Raptors, and in particular, Fred Van Vliet, who is a free agent this summer. And there are two teams being linked to him in potential sign-in trade deals. So I'm going to be talking about those teams, and I'm also going to be looking at the roster and what the Raptors could potentially acquire. So if you're ready to watch this video, make sure to hit the like button and make sure to hit the subscribe button as well. That'd be very, very much appreciated. So with that being said, Let's get into today's video. Now, this was being reported by NBA Central stating Fred Van Vliet has emerged as a potential replacement for James Harden in Philadelphia per Brett Siegel. Now, obviously, we know Nick Nurse just got hired by the 76ers a day ago, and there's been all sorts of talks about how they're very close to each other, and obviously, Fred may just follow Nick Nurse. Now, taking a look at the 76ers roster here, they would obviously have to do a sign entry deal because they don't have enough cap space, even if James Harden leaves to straight up sign Fred Van Vliet. So and taking into consideration that Fred is making about $18 million and he's looking for a pay raise, he's probably looking for somewhere around the 22 to 27 million per season deal. It becomes very challenging to do a deal with the 76ers. Tobias Harris is making $39 million. Joel Embiid is making $46.9 million next season. So all of a sudden you take a look at guys who you could potentially trade for and it becomes really difficult unless you're willing to throw a deal together of PJ Tucker, DeAnthony Melton and Corkmas. Even then, again, it's it makes it a little bit hard, right? If especially if you get into the late 20s and he's making close to 27, 28 million dollars, all of a sudden matching that money becomes a little bit of a challenge. And to be honest, if I'm the Raptors, I don't know if I do that deal personally. I know Fred has had a down season, and I know fans will be quick to mention Tyrese Maxey. There's no way in hell the 76ers are throwing in Tyrese Maxey. Obviously, his salary is not very, very, making very much money as well, but there's just no way in any scenario I see Tyrese Maxey being dealt for someone like a Fred Van Vliet. So we can scratch that name off the board. And again, P.J. Tucker, Melton, Corkmas, is that really a good deal for the Raptors? You got a question. I know Melton is a good young player, but Corkmas and look, I don't know, man. P.J. Tucker's good. You could flip him for, you know, assets if you want. You can keep him. But I don't know. If I'm the Raptors, I don't really see a great deal here. So I'm not going to spend too much time on the 76ers. It becomes hard to do a deal with the 76ers. But you can use that in a leverage because there is a second team that is being rumored to be interested in Fred Van Lee in a sign-in trade. And that second team is the LA Lakers. Again, the shout out to NBA Central for reporting this. They said Lakers would prefer to use the Angelo Russell in a sign and trade and when we heard these rumors a few days ago and also last week as well and shout out to raptors update on instagram that posted lakers would prefer a sign and trade scenario over retaining russell and have toronto raptors guard fred van Lee on their radar as a potential target so obviously taking a look and this was being reported by the way by jovan buhan of the athletic taking a quick look at the lakers salad cap situation as well Again, keeping in mind that Fred Van Lee projected to make around 22, 27 million on his new deal, it becomes all of a sudden really challenging. Malik Beasley is a name that's being thrown out there, Mo Bamba as well. But if personally, if you ask me, that's not a great return either. So obviously, a D'Angelo Russell will likely have to happen in a sign and trade for Fred Van Lee. Now, if I'm being honest and I'm the Raptors, this gives you more leverage because now all of a sudden you have two teams. If the Lakers aren't giving you what you want, you could go to the 76ers. If the 76ers were very unlikely, I know, to include Tyrese Maxey, you can kind of go back and forth and create a bidding war between the two teams. Now, obviously, this would depend entirely on James Harden leaving the 76ers to begin with. But also, when you take a look at the Lakers roster real quick here, again, D'Angelo Russell is really the only realistic option I see. There's no way in which I see the Lakers doing throwing in Jared Vanderbilt in there. Like, it, there's just no deal that gets done without including D'Angelo Russell. Now, I'm not going to lie... Obviously, Fred Van Lee hasn't had the greatest of season. I'm not expecting a great return, but D'Angelo Russell is not a player I was high on until I look, took a look at his statistics. And look, I understand that people will go off of recency bias and say, look at his performance in the playoffs. But honestly, he's a pretty good return for Fred Van Lee. Let's be honest. Like, took, Take a look at his statistics here. And you can't tell me this is not a nice return for Fred Van Lee in a sign-in trade. Now, you look at the season he had with the Lakers and the Minnesota Timberwolves this past season. Obviously, he got traded, but in about 32 minutes played with Minnesota, shot 46.5% from the field, which is impressive and something the Raptors desperately need because they just do not shoot the ball efficiently and their guards shoot very poorly as well. And on to throw on top of that, his three-point shooting is excellent. He hasn't shot under 39% in the last two seasons. And he shot 41% with the Lakers as well 
And look, his free throw percentage is pretty decent. I know he dipped a little bit with the Lakers. 85% is pretty good. Um, his assist column is pretty good. Six assists, not the greatest of rebounder. He can get you some steals. But the thing for me is he's also a scorer. So the Raptors are essentially trading Fred Van Lee for a guy that can shoot three-point ball really, really well, can shoot the ball efficiently from the field, and is someone that can pass. I know his numbers may not necessarily indicate it, D'Angelo Russell is actually a pretty good passer. So again, the Raptors need this kind of ball movement, which would be great to have in a D'Angelo Russell. He also attacks the basket. He's also an efficient scorer as well. So you're getting a scorer, someone who can pass the ball, and someone who shoots a three-point ball and shoots the ball efficiently. Those are really four high-quality assets to have in a player. So I know people, like I said, a lot of Raptors fans may not think highly of D'Angelo Russell at the moment, but I personally like this. You take a look at the stats, man. It's not bad. Now, honestly, if I'm the Raptors and you ask me if this is the deal that's going to happen, there are a few things I need to take into consideration before this deal goes through. First things first is how does D'Angelo fit into the Raptors? Now, he's not a great defensive player, so that is something that could hurt his value in a sign and trade, particularly to a team like the Raptors that really value defense. Now, of course, they do need offense and shooting as well, which is something he provides. But another factor I'm taking into consideration is... He's obviously not, let's be honest, if we do acquire him, I don't see him as a long-term future fit here. If the Raptors do acquire him, the question you have to ask yourselves is, we can definitely trade this player in the future, but what are we going to get in return? That's a big question. He's obviously an asset to the Raptors. He's only 26. He's going to be 27 next year. So what can you get in return for him if you traded him a season down the road? So that's a big question if I'm the Toronto Raptors. But these trade rumors are very interesting. Obviously, we're close to the draft, and then we'll get free agency, and we'll see what happens. But I think the Raptors have a lot of options regarding Fred Van Vliet. Now, what are your thoughts on these rumors? Do you like the 76ers or the Lakers as trading partners? Again, I just don't see the 76ers giving up Tyrese Maxey as much as we'd like. There's no way they're giving that up. So let me know a couple of players you have in mind from both teams that you would want back in a trade, in a sign and trade for Fred Van Vliet. So that will be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I do apologize. There's no trivia question. I know I've been slacking. I'm actually headed to my next job in less than an hour. So I just really wanted to bring you guys this video. So if you're still watching and you want to support this channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And that will be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I hope you guys have yourselves a great day.